Hello and you're very welcome to the Jamma Podcast. I'm John Wan. Of course, the podcast is brought to you by orbrecht.com. Use promo Jamma Podcast to get 50% off on their website. Loads of gear dropping just in time for the championship, so get your hands on the gear. And today I'm joined by New, New York senior footballer Shane Carty to talk about last weekend's unbelievable success for the New York footballers. Um, a bit on Shane's obviously career right there at the minute, and obviously a bit in the dubs as well. And just a bit of a chat about the current state of affairs. So, really looking forward to chatting to Shane today. How are you keeping it, Shane? I'm great, yeah. Settling down after a mad couple of days, as if we uh, won the All Ireland there. It's a, it's a, it's a bittersweet, obviously, because you have the game next week to look forward to. It. So trying to get the bodies right, you kind of forget that. Well, hold on, actually, we didn't win anything here, so we have to get back down to earth and, and get going again. Hundred percent, man. And obviously, quite the week it is and was. Obviously, a sensational win against uh, Leitrim uh, uh, last weekend. Obviously, we can touch the game now in a couple of couple of seconds. But I'm, I'm presuming the week's just been absolutely brilliant, and it's obviously gave New York football an unbelievable lift. Yeah, like there's, I think I was saying it before we started here. Like there's like millions of people. No, not millions. Sorry, that's a bit mad. But there's thousands of people all over New York um, and America that are obsessed with Gaelic games, whether they have connections to Ireland at all. Um, but like there was grown women and children or grown men and women there at that game like crying on, on Saturday night which was uh which is great to see um so no it was it was phenomenal achievement for for New York and for the states in general um and hopefully it's I think it's, it's, it can only be really good for the game um and as it, as it continues to grow so delighted to be part of it I suppose what's this was obviously we're over it's it's Thurs now. So what what's this week been like for you? Obviously, like I've been been following you know social media, obviously media wise, like it's 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 great kind of obviously great to get yourself out there and obviously the New York GA uh, out there as well. And it's been a busy week for you, no doubt. So obviously, as you're kind of maybe <laughs> saying to come down, it's been fairly ferocious. Yeah, like sure, it was a Sunday game and uh, radio one at quarter past five on uh Monday morning, so we were, I was out till pretty much five o'clock and chatting to Marty Marcy at five fifteen in the morning our time. So, uh, and and then just different podcasts and stuff and off the ball. But look, to be honest, um, it's great. But I, I think the main reason we want to try and do that is to try and create the hype around, you know, New York and and football in America and try and get that message across, um, mm-hmm. because it is a great game that we have. But it's also you know it's so massive to people over here like. The, the New York County board and the guys see how and, and the same with like no different than the North American board the amount of hours these people are putting in to Gaelic games um, and in the underage structures in particular so it's great for them people as well you know just to get something that they can uh, some reward for all their efforts yeah no absolutely and I suppose obviously a week a week lo- like no other and <clears throat> obviously history created and obviously the, like the game itself you know it went to penalties and I suppose like what's been I suppose even around the team I suppose morale in the last couple of days has been probably quite incredible I suppose Shane yeah like the last, uh, Saturday night was a bit mad and obviously Sunday then as well we had a full day of uh, different bars and, and and as you can imagine the crack on the Sunday uh, the day two was great um and then to be honest then monday was i was on a flight back up to boston i was back back to work like you know so yeah um yeah, yeah like it's just trying to to manage the manage the body and manage the the, the all work as well just trying to get stuff organized for next week so that we can uh, go on this trip and, and try and get to a kind of final yeah, serious carrot at the end of the stick, make no doubt about it, Shane. I suppose obviously the game itself, it was obviously New York 15, Leeds from 15, and that was after extra time. And of course, New York won the game 2-0 on penalties. Obviously, penalties is a, a new thing we all have to get used to. And it's maybe a lot of people maybe say it's not the, the maybe a crude way to go out, but obviously New York did not give a toss after that game was over. Quite the game, Shane. Obviously, very, very exciting. Probably the probably one of the best, probably the game of the championship, obviously thus far. Um, but yeah, what 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 a result, what a victory. Yeah, it really was. Like um I I'd want to say that game's been coming now the last like three or four months because when I first got involved with the New York team, like I met with Johnny um uh, and I could just hear there was a massive buzz from him and, and there was obviously a big buy in because so much of the squad had stayed from the team that was there last year. Uh, which is very unusual, like in New York. I'm sure it's the case in London as well. There's always a massive turnover of players, but he kind of he kept most of the group. Um, I'd say like 95% of the group that was there last year. So they had been building from Sligo to for this game, um, and he said, "Look, we're bringing in a couple of guys, and we want you to be one as well." So it was a 
it was nice to kind of feel like they've already got a, a really strong base and a platform there that you know myself and a couple of guys coming in can just help add to that um and then in the game itself like looking back i just felt that we we were so up for the game before it um and that maybe i've been on the other side of that, of that before where you know i remember being part of a vincent's team that lost to rat new in the leinster quarterfinal which was uh you know as big a shock if not big bigger than than us beating leitrim you know so uh, i just felt like i've been on those sides of the game when after 15 minutes you should be pulling away and you're not and the closer it is the longer it is the longer that the underdog stays in the game the more they grow into the game the more confident they become and, and as the game went on you know we, we went three down straight away but we we kind of got it back to to level game so it kind of showed that we can actually play and it gave us a bit of confidence like the first 10 minutes i'd say we were just trying to get to the pace of the game because we haven't played any game as a as a 15 together at all so yeah. um even myself and adrian vardy were, were joking the night before the game saying we haven't even trained together me, myself and vardy so yeah uh, we're, we're just hoping that it would all come right in the we're day. just hoping for the best nearly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and to be honest we were kind of our kind of ethos has been that like you've got guys from all over obviously Ireland, you've got American kids. So everyone has a different story and, and a different background and a different style of play, even like, you know, like yeah. there's like Johnny McGinney, he's, he's our man. So he kind of has this naughty, naughty kind of style of play. And then you've yeah. the boy, these are two carry boys. They're not happy with that at all. So they, they want to be <laughs> kicking the ball and they, they'd be like, this is, this is madness. Like, what are we doing here? You know? And then, and then yeah, obviously yeah, they yeah. get the Dublin style as well. So there's lots of different, dynamics and, uh, yeah and you're trying to get it all together to bring like well look what's what's a new york style of play look like and, and how can we influence that and mm. it was just trying to find something that we could be able to imp implement in, in a short space of time that would work for the group and I, I guess look our whole thing was let's not try and over complicate it and, and think too many steps ahead we have to just get down to basics here and if we can get the basics right well then who knows what can happen on the day you know Mm. I suppose Shane, like it's an interesting thing, and obviously you've been part of really successful St Vincent teams. You've been part of just, well, I suppose, probably double team, probably the greatest team of all time. Shane, like, like the preparation, obviously going into that game, and obviously New York's preparation. Obviously, you just kind of said you just recently joined the panel. Like, do you maybe think, like, obviously you've been in a part of great teams. Do you maybe think that there's a bit of overthinking that goes into GA, maybe teams, team ethos? Like, do you maybe feel sometimes teams could be a bit overcoached, or like, I suppose, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, 100%. Like, look, I was very fortunate to be part of the greatest football team of all time with, with that one six in a row. Um, and I got so much learning from that. But, like, at the end of the day, Jim Gavin used to just say, like, look, we're focusing on the fundamentals and he wants everyone to go out and express themselves. And I just felt, looking back on the game, even with Leitrim, like, their warm-up and, and some of the way the guys were playing, they felt very, I felt they were kind of boxed in, a bit structured. And the intercounty okay. game, I feel like, is gone a bit too much like that, where yeah, you know, yeah. there's there's systems of play, um, you know, there's GPS systems or like so many stats, mm -hmm. um, and and believe me, I'm not against any of that. Like, I think information is power, so it's how you use that. But at the end of the day, it's 15 amateur players against another set of 15 amateur players. So we're not professional athletes. Obviously, we want to be as conditioned. Um, and as prepared as possible but at the end of the day throw the ball up and whoever wants it more that usually comes comes to fruition so mm. that, that that that's a big thing for 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 our team as well is that like we don't want to be delayed like talking too much about what we're going to do and it's just like right let's just go out and try and tear into them you know yeah yeah, and I suppose obviously the way the game is, it's been a lot, like a lot of people have maybe kind of saying like some of the games even in the last couple of weeks and even in the league, like teams maybe are holding fire and this kind of lateral football going backwards. I suppose obviously you just kind of let rip at the weekend and of course you probably let rip against Sligo when you are absolutely dead right. Like let's go back to what we have maybe in the early naughty shade. So your your mindset maybe is, you know, let the kids play, I suppose. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like it's like when you're a kid playing football, you're not talking about, you know, um, are we playing a sweeper or you're not talking about any of this you're just saying like win your individual battle and try and get on the ball and try and kick a score and try and defend and like if you look there we have a, we do two cornerbacks that were or, or the whole full back line was man on man just trying to defend and win your win your own ball and it was the same with front like just win your own ball and try and get a score so 
I think that's the way the game should be played. Is is it's a free spirited game. It's it's off the cuff. You can't bring in like an American football style of, you know, we're trying to influence plays and uh, overcomplicate it. At the end of the uh-huh. day, we can't uh-huh. reinvent the wheel. Like it's what's beautiful about the game is how how chaotic it is, and yeah, I think yeah. that's the way that should be nearly focused on more. Is like. Like you couldn't you, even the last score there. I, I couldn't have planned on how we were going to get that. Like as, as no. it just came on a how off intuition, and and that's what was brilliant about everything. And maybe do you feel maybe coaches like and obviously the teams you've been involved with, do you maybe feel coaches kind of get lost in the whole thing of being really, I suppose maybe I wouldn't say afraid to lose games, but really really kind of tentative and you know this lack of like kicks, kick passing inside of the forward line, it's all just sideways and backwards and being nearly afraid to express yourself and like a player that always breaks my mind a good many years, Jeremy Connolly, class act. Yeah, like exactly, he's probably the perfect example of like the the rogue that doesn't believe in. Uh, and, you know, like if he kicked the ball away, he's still the next time he gets on it, he's going to try and kick the ball again. And, and uh, to be fair, like Dublin, when, when I was part of that, those those teams, there was no no way that they wanted to be overly cautious. Our whole thing was we're going to go at this this team where we were playing. And I felt like maybe teams showed Dublin too much respect and didn't try and match that and didn't mm-hmm. try and fight fire with fire. Mm-hmm. And they tried to maybe go out and not lose the game. And that was that was kind of mm. my whole thing against Legion was like, look, we're not going out to not lose the game and keep this tight. Like we're going out to win. Like we need to attack them because if we're just kind of sitting off and keeping the ball and trying to like pl- play ourselves into the game, that's not going to work, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting one, especially when you watch some of the games back home, like uh, not that I'm anyway against it, the naughty style of play. I mean, you have to do whatever you can to win, but I think Donegal changed that in 2012, mm-hmm. 2011. And um, now I think it's nearly gone gone t- too much down that road of teams setting up like that. So you'd mm-hmm. like to, I like personally, everyone wants to see high scoring, high attacking games, kicking the ball, mm-hmm. fielding. Like you had some unbelievable fielding at, on, on um on Saturday night between Gavin O'Brien and and Johnny Glynn, like just two animals in the middle of the pitch, and that's that that was nearly beautiful to watch. Like, and then you had some great kick passes, you had some great kicking, you had great defending. So, like, the game yeah. itself had had everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, more often, Shane, because I think obviously some of the league games uh, can it just passed a lot of people by. Even some of the I don't know, did you get your eyes on many of the Division One games this year? But like, it was just a serious lack of quality. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really watch much Gaelic football anymore. Yeah, it, it you're can, probably you're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. <laughs> it can be t- it can honestly be tough to watch. Like um, yeah. a couple of that, like I live with a buddy of mine. He's from Donegal, and and he'd obviously want to be watching all the games. And then um, I had uh, Kieran McFall was living with me as well, and obviously he wanted to watch all the Derry games. And I was like, that's like I, I struggle to watch these games because okay. the the entertainment is is just not there really, unless it's a, unless there's se- like something at stake, like you'd see there the Ross Common Mayo game. Yeah. They were tearing into it like Roscom were tearing into them because it was like it was war. Like and and yeah. unless it's that kind of environment, I think Gaelic games isn't the league for me is very tough to watch. Um, it's okay. just like ticking the box. Like a lot of teams, like even Kerry, like they're not they're not not even showing their whole hand. They're just trying to stay up in Division One, but they're not really going after it. So yeah. when I heard obviously that all the hype about Mayo winning Sam because they had won won the league, it was like well, half the teams in the league aren't even playing like. Yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, you, you've hit the nail in the head there. I think obviously Mayo's high train has came to a halt, and they want five, six weeks to prepare for the college championship. So I'm not sure that Mr. McStay planned for that, but we will wait and see. I suppose back to the game, uh, Shane. Obviously, um, what during the week were you kind of looking at from the each of things? Because obviously, Keith Byrne, we know about the parents around the game. He kicked nine points, five frees, one mark. So obviously, very impressive. So what, what will we talk about when it's come to the tactics against each other? Um, or was there we, didn't try, <laughs> we, we didn't try and focus too much. Honestly, like that, we were trying to deflect away from them and no disrespect to each of them at all, but we, I, I was trying to believe, or, and, I, and I honestly do believe that on paper we had a better football team because of the experience we had with guys that played Division One, um, whether it's football or hurling. Um, you know, um, yeah. we'd, we'd probably won more um, at a higher level on paper with them, with our, with our team. So I honestly believe that we couldn't get overly focused on Leitrim um, and then like from a tactical point of view we, we, we obviously looked at some of their kickouts and some of their previous Division 4 games but again 
uh, were they showing their full hands? It's tough to know. So we didn't want to like they kept changing players. So it was kind of yeah. difficult to to see. Obviously, Keith Byrne was the the main guy they had up front. So you know, Alan Campbell, Soupy done an incredible job marking him. He, uh, you know, I don't think I think think he he might have scored one from play at the end, but mm. I don't really. I think Soupy had him very tight. Um, and other than that, like we didn't really put too much more emphasis on it. It was more about like what we were going to do and. That that was mainly our our focus, really. Hmm. I suppose obviously reverting back, obviously you know near the end, obviously you getting the getting the grip and the kick at the end, and obviously the excitement and the buzz and the thrill that kind of comes. And I suppose some of the talk, talk going into obviously the game itself, a lot of people saying like it was set up and the astroturf pitch and this that and you're like, do you, do, you, do you buy any of that kind of crack of all like it was an astroturf pitch or blah blah blah? Like some of the media, I suppose, getting on that sport, sort of hype train. Yeah, I mean, look that. Gail, I don't, I don't know if you've been to Gaelic Park, but it's a, it's a kind of a, it's an interesting kind of place because you're in the Bronx, like on the stand, the on the player side, on the sideline, there's the the one train is actually going, going across. It's where they keep all the, so you're right on the subway line, um, and then as you go around, like it's Manhattan College, so there's like a lot about Manhattan College, and um, they they play all their games there for like lacrosse and softball, like even actually on the pitch, there's like a a softball like a baseball diamond <laughs> so it's like <laughs> uh so it, it's definitely like if you're if you're a leitrim or anything coming over it's it it's just something you're completely not used to um mm-hmm. and obviously we're training on that you know all, the, the guys are playing every game there during the summer and they're training all year round on that so that's definitely a slight advantage um and then like you know we had the crowd the place was packed there was nine thousand people there and it's a, it's it, the stadium's not really built for that yeah. You know, it maybe holds max three or four. So it was like people yeah. are climbing over the fence here. I'd say there was a, right, yeah. some sort of safety hazard or something. But, uh, <laughs> like back in the day. Like back in yeah, the day, it was yeah. literally like back in the day. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that that's all again, like we're trying to make it a bit of a cauldron that like you're coming to the, the lion's den here. And, you yeah. know, obviously they're flying over. Then they're in New York City um, staying in a hotel. All those things like we were trying to buy into like it's going to be we're going to make it as difficult as possible for them. Yeah. Um, whereas like we're staying in the same small things like we're having our own breakfast we're you know in our own routine uh, kind of away from the madness whereas like they're in Manhattan trying to you know get, get on a bus and go to Gator Park it's it, it can be yeah. difficult especially if they've got a lot of young guys that haven't been on that trip before you know I suppose yourself, Shane. Obviously, you you've obviously recently joined the panel, like you know, the week leading into the Leitrim game. Like, I suppose obviously you've been part of Umbel, as, as we keep mentioning, oh, unbelievable double teams. But like your nerves going into this game, like was there any nerves? Or you're like, you know, oh, I, I'm kind of a bit. If you get me. Yeah, no, um, it was a weird one because I was carrying a bit of a. A few of us were carrying a bit of an injuries going in, and um, like it's difficult training on that Astro pitch, so we had kind of. I said to one of the lads after, I never felt as unfit going into a game, but okay. during the game, felt so fit during the game. It was it was weird. Um, I think that was obviously, it's obviously adrenaline and you're fueling off the crowd and you just a few painkillers in you and you're just trying to get going. But um, yeah, it was, it was, I wouldn't say I was nervous more. I was just hoping that I could, we could kind of seize the moment and I was just trying to focus on doing the right things and, and helping the team in terms of a lot of young guys that haven't been in those games. Like yeah. Shane Bros and his kid is wing back playing next to me on the on the on the uh he was playing half back and like he had an excellent game and my uh, my whole thing was like trying to help those young guys that haven't played maybe in these in some of the bigger games. So yeah I wanted to try and show as much confidence as possible to help them feel as comfortable as possible. Um, yeah. And and I, I think it worked. Like some of those young guys had an excellent game. Like Shane Brosnan, um, he was phenomenal. Mikey Brosnan, his brother, played very well. Um, you know, we just had a really good. Everyone that you wanted to to see kind of stand up really did their job. You know. And even from uh, Leitrim, I think so Shane, obviously Andy Moran is over Leitrim the last two years. Like, and obviously you probably would have played against Andy Moran a couple of times. I suppose even that factor alone going into the game was interesting. Yeah, it's a funny one because uh, the the, the Leitrim coach is a uh, is a guy Luke Bree who was a buddy of mine back in Dublin. He he actually lived with me for a couple of years in yeah. uh, in Dublin, and he was part of the St. Vincent's team that won the All Ireland in twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. And then he actually coached the Vincent's team my last year in two thousand eighteen. 
Okay. So I knew that, like, look, they're going to be very well coached with Andy Moran. And I know Luke Bree is, like, he's an excellent football coach, the way he's so, um, he plans everything to a T. So I knew they're going to be physically very fit, they're going to be well coached, but, like, we might be able to get them with a bit of complacency was our, was kind of what we were feeding off. Um, and, yeah, like, look, no, like, I still think it's a bit unfair the way that the treatment they, they might have got. I know their Twitter was giving them a bit of a roasting and the media back home saying it was, yeah. you know, humiliating. And um, I actually met with a couple of Leitrim guys on, on Sunday night after a few beers. And yeah, and I, I, I kind of made that point. Like, it, sh- it shouldn't be like that at all because no, because it, like it, yeah. it's, it's a game of football at the end of the day. Yeah. They're, they're coming yeah. over there. It's a difficult place to go. Hostile. They're amateurs. We're amateurs. Like, at the end of the day, it's a game of football. Like one team exactly. lost, one team won, and yeah. like again, back to the point. Like I, I genuinely believe on paper, like that we had a better team, so it shouldn't really be kind of made out like that, you know. Yeah, keyboard warriors, for Shane, and obviously yeah, Leach and Weir. I think literally the county board had to kind of come out and say like they were they weren't impressed with some of the tweets that were being put up, and then uh, so we having a conversation before I got talking to you with 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 a chap, and we just a lot of was on call for, and I know a lot of you, know, you can have people hiding behind their phones and their laptops and their screen chains. So, Tokyo on call for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, look, they're all good guys that are trying to represent their county. Um, and any man that puts on the jersey, you know, you know the effort that he's putting in, the the amount of hours training he's doing, you know, he's he's making a lot of time to accommodate for that, to give everything he can for his county, whether it's Leitrim or Dublin or or any county. So I, I've nothing but massive respect for anyone that goes through that and puts that in. So for anyone to get on, you know, social media or any any platform and kind of start throwing abuse is, uh, it, it just goes to show it's 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 not what the game's about, you know. Hmm. Especially when they're not getting a dime for it as well, Shane. I suppose when the game went That's to penalties, it, yeah. yeah. And I, when the when the game went to penalties, what was the head like? What was the head like at that stage? <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I was dying to take a penalty. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I, I was cramping up um, in the second half of extra time. Like I couldn't, yeah. couldn't run. I was just every every time I went to run, I was cramp, cramp, cramp. So oh, okay. I, had, I had to get taken off. Um, and then I didn't realize that you had to finish the. The guy was going over to Davy Cole. He was like, "What way is this going here?" Um, oh, and he's okay. like, "No, you, you can't take a pen off because you weren't on the pitch." So I was, yeah, I was yeah, freaked. Yeah. I was freaked. Um, but look, yeah, I think it was written in the stars. Like Shane Brosnan um, actually came on for me in the second half, or not Shane, but uh, Mikey Brosnan came on for Mikey me. Mikey Brosnan, yeah, yeah, in the second half of of extra time, and sure enough, he was the man that slotted it. So it was yeah. it was meant to be, you know. So and, and yeah. fair play to Mikey. Like he's a really the two brothers are like really good kids and um, you see how much they put into it, like two American born guys that have grown up playing for Barnabas and, and just want to play for New York to, to try and win a game. And that, that a lot of guys will not ever win in all Ireland. And, and that's as good a feeling as they'll get to win in all Ireland, you know? I suppose what was the buzz, like we, we only seen the clips maybe on Twitter and Facebook, whatever you're having yourself, like just when that penalty went in by Mr. Brosnan, it's just pure and utter euphoria. Yeah, it, to be honest, for me, it was more relief because this it was like kind of the game just kept going on. Like it was obviously 78, 78 minutes of, of normal play and then you two ten. So it, it was almost like a 120 minutes by the time the penalties were going. You know, it was it was two hours, two and a half. It was, it was late night by the, by the time the game. It was half finished. two over here when everything was wrapped up. Yeah. <laughs> so like I was just honestly like this, this, this can't go on any longer. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. Um, and there was more just relief because obviously there was, I think it's 23 years of New York playing in the in the Connacht Championship and never won a game. So yes, yeah, that that uh, itself, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was more just honestly relief was the word. Yeah, yeah, no, just incredible. I suppose what was what was Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night like? Her, I was all. <laughs> yeah, Saturday night was uh was a great like we went up to um, a place Jackson Bronxville. It's um. One of the guys on the um, who's been massive involved with with the GA in New York through the Kerry team, he has a, a really good bar restaurant there. So we went up there for um, a bite to eat and um, just the players and had a few few drinks. And then a couple of uh, taxis started heading down to to McLean <laughs> Avenue then, which is the the big spot in uh, in the Bronx, which is like a, it's like the Irish Mile there of of the Bronx and. Um, yeah, the bars were were crazy. It was queues out the door, and you know yeah. it, was, it was mad scenes in the bar. 
And then Sunday then, I always find that the day two is probably the best day because it's just all the players together. Yeah. Um, we met up for breakfast in um, Jerry's place down in um, on the Upper East Side, had kind of had the, the Sunday fry and we had the Mayo uh, Ross Common game on and the Rangers yeah. having a few bottles. And then obviously we watched our own game back and then, uh, yeah, that was, it, was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I was head choose the Wednesday tours, <laughs> or I said today even. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, that was it was a couple of days, and then Monday it was I was flying back up to Boston, and uh, that that was the end. That was the end of it. It's back into work, like it's like I said before, like in America, it's, it, it, it's it doesn't stop. Like you got to, it's just work, work, work. So yeah. um, it's never ending, you know. Yeah, I suppose when you just got back into town or wherever you just went after the game, like the bit that it was anyone coming up saying well done, like was there supporters about or what was the situation or on Saturday night after the game? Yeah, 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 oh, right, yeah. It was, it was, oh, it was like a, it was honestly like something like coppers. It was a oh, brilliant. We went to a bar, Ned Devines in uh, in McLean Avenue, which is like uh, all around there. There's like four or five bars um, across the road. It's, it's a bar, JP Clark's that actually sponsors the Leitrim, Leitrim senior team. Yeah. 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 So yeah. as you can imagine, like there, I've, I've heard there was four thousand people that flew over from Leitrim for that game. Right. So right. Okay. everyone was kind of in this one area, um, yeah. like like a coppers kind of vibe to it. Uh, so right, it was yeah. just it was oh, I was mad. It's like people were, obviously we were chatting to all the supporters and you know, yeah, it was, it was good old scenes. Brilliant, brilliant. Great to see, great to see, Shane. I suppose just yourself, Shane. Obviously, you you were part of some like, like incredible, incredible double teams over the years. Now. So we have referenced and part of parts of Vincent's teams and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose like a couple of years ago, when you're before you you did, you did fly stateside, like really enjoyable times for yourself. Yeah, it looked like uh, when I first went went back to to Dublin, I was very lucky to get in with a. Uh, a Vincent's team that had won in All Ireland in two thousand eight, and I was coming in around 20, 2010, I think it was my first year with the senior team, um, and and twenty twenty no, it was twenty eleven, twenty twenty eleven, my first team, uh, first time playing senior with Vincent's, it was like nineteen at the time, and then it was very fortunate twenty twelve, Tommy Conroy, Neil Kerr, and Sean Brady took over, and the three of them completely changed the culture in, in the in the senior team, mm. and we. But we went on then to to obviously win the Dublin Championship in 2013, mm-hmm. a couple of epic battles with Ballymun, and then we went on and won the All Ireland in 2014, and we were, we won like four Dublin Championships out of five years. So like Vincent's gave me a massive platform in terms of like becoming a much better footballer, but also becoming a better person. And uh, it was very lucky then to get involved with a couple of Dublin squads that was just up another level then. Um, and learning from the likes of Jim Gavin and um, the background staff that they had there was just like, for me, it was like a sponge. I just wanted to soak up as much as possible. Um, and it was very fortunate to be part of those teams that, that won all Ireland's. And looking back, like it was, it happens all so fast. And here we are, like now I'm, I'm 31, living in Boston. Um, it's tough to believe that the amount of stuff that went on, like in terms of, winning championships with, with Vincent's and, and with obviously with, with Dublin. So uh, you don't really reflect on it until it's a couple of years on and then you're like, oh, Jesus, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny when the years go by, or I suppose the COVID would have took two years of our life away. And I suppose what was your main reason maybe for going stateside chain? Like, did you just have enough of Ireland or was it just? Um, like, I was very content to live in a home. Like, I, I worked in Bank of Ireland for four years and uh, was... Basically, during COVID, uh, my father lives over. He's in between New York and Vermont over here in the States. So um, I basically came over and was staying with him for a bit and came up to Boston for um, a weekend and met a couple of the guys that are involved with the Tony Gall Boston team. Um, and they were like, look, you have, a, you have an American passport. You're not thinking about staying. And uh, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. look, if the right opportunity came, I wouldn't rule it out. Like, you know, and yeah. sure enough, they... Um, I got a call then, and uh, from a buddy of mine, Brian Rooney, who uh, um, introduced me to the company I now work with. Uh, was Irish owned, like the manager, the the owners from uh, Mead. So yeah. it actually, I met him, and we just hit it off, and uh, and here we are. He's like, when could you start? And I was like, you know what, like you sometimes you just have to go with what way 
if 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 momentum's going this way, you just got to jump on the train and go and see what happens. And and that's mm. that's the way I, I didn't really think dwell too much on it. I just said, yeah, I'll give it a go. When myself mm. and Dermot came over in 2018 for the summer, yeah, we came to Boston and uh, we just we both loved the place. Like, uh, was that your people. first year in Boston, 2018? First time ever in Boston, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we we just loved the city, number one, and we loved the club. Like the the people involved with like with Donegal Boston were were excellent. They they were literally. We're, we're so well looking after us and making sure we are happy and you know the train it was just a great buzz around around the place so yeah. we knew then we wanted to come back in 2019 um, and we were fortunate to win both of those years obviously COVID they didn't have a year and then 2021 was I transferred to to Donegal Boston it was my first kind of full year and it was an, it was it's actually a unique enough year because it was all home based there was no sanctions over that year yeah and uh, and we won the championship again so it was um yeah, I just I fell in love with Boston, and I really do enjoy it here. Like I love what I do at work. Um, so sometimes things just just happen for a reason. I believe. Like I think my time in 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 Dublin was was kind of finished in terms of like my football career was kind of at the twilight ends. And um, like it's a very it's a young man's game. Like when you start picking up injuries, you know it can be very difficult mentally more than anything. You know, I like hamstrings and I had a couple of shoulder injuries and broke a leg so all those things like it just it, it, it slowly chips away at you and by the end of it it's like it's just really worth it like I can't de- deal with the, the mental warfare of it anymore of trying to get fit and seeing physios so yeah uh, even the New York physio at this stage is, is probably sick of looking at it, so. <laughs> yeah 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 so that's that was cool. it really and yeah. Then, yeah like it's been a, it's been a it's been a whirlwind kind of last couple of years and then even just with New York the last 10 weeks have been just really really enjoyable to be honest yeah I suppose obviously the commitment to Dublin would have brought your life when you were playing for the Dubs and even Vincent's like compared to probably now it's probably day and night I'd say oh like come here when you're involved with a team like Dublin um, it's 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 24-7 it's uh, yeah. you know on, on days off you're doing recovery sessions you're, you're always looking at some sort of angle to get a little bit better and to get an out to get you an edge up on the guy that's fighting for your spot as well. So, um, and, and that's, and it's honestly, it's brilliant because it's a short career that we all have. So you have to make the most of it. And it's the same with Vincent's like the amount of hours that, you know, was going into the, the top level of club football in Dublin is no different than, than county football or around the country. So, um, it, it can be a bit draining and it definitely can be, it can take its toll, especially when you start getting the injuries and you're trying to get back for, for games and you know, maybe you're not as fit as you need to be or you, or you should be. Um, so the mental side of it, I found can be, can be very challenging, but, but you, as you get older, you start to, to realize there's, there's more important things in life. And, uh, that was big for me as I wanted to focus more on my career and the next chapter in my life. And because I achieved so much with the game, it was kind of like, look, I'm running out of stuff to win here, like so. I need to move on to something else, and that's going to get the juices flowing outside of football. And luckily for me, that that's now my career here in Boston. So, Shane, what was it like to get your hands on the Sam McGuire? Brilliant! Like when I was a kid, the the um, the Sam McGuire was in New York for uh, the Kerry team won it, and the, there's a woman, Joan Henchy, her house is literally around the corner from mine and she's the the chairperson of New York GA right now mm. um, and she had the Sam McGuire down in her cup and I went down in a, in a Dublin jersey and uh, yeah. got, to, got to lift it up then and I was like one day I'm going to lift that yeah, and, yeah. and I'd say she thought I was messing but I, in the back of my head I wasn't and um, yeah I was very fortunate then to, to get over and get get involved with with that Dublin team and obviously play, 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 play a few minutes and try and get as much game time as possible. And then when we did, you know, when I did actually get to lift the Sam Maguire, it was, a, again, like a massive relief for me because you know how much time and effort you put in and to see you actually get the rewards for it. Um, you know, a lot of people can, can lose the, when they're not seeing those rewards come, they can kind of lose the, lose the path. But I stuck to the path and finally got the hands on that one as well. And it, that Dublin team, Shane, really like remarkable, remarkable team. And it just year after year after year after year, like, it, like what was it like to be part of that winning culture? Yeah, I mean, like there's phenomenal individuals there. I wouldn't even say football is just really, really good people. Like you know, um, I was very fortunate to be in that environment where everyone is just trying to 
compete and push themselves to the absolute limit. And what was brilliant is there was so much competition in the squad. Mm. Um, like myself and Paul Flynn always used to have battles for to try and get the jersey and the same with, you know, like you'd, you'd guys pushing everyone to the limit um, to try and kill each other in the neighbours B game to try and get a, you know, into the 26, let alone yeah. into the into the starting 15. And huh. you could see that then in probably the latter years when, when Bernard Brogan was kind of on his last couple, last year, he, like he was, he was struggling to make the 26. And mm. um, I knew exactly how he felt because it's, it's a difficult time. It's a difficult squad to get into and Jim could make it very uh, difficult for anyone. So there's no, like, no matter who you are, it's not about the individual. It's always about the team. Mm. Um, which can be can be difficult, but at the end of the day, like that's what that's why they they were so successful. That's why they won all Ireland's, um, and, and competition fuels performance, and and that's exactly what they what they we brought into you know. Mm. So Shane, I have to ask you, but obviously 2018 when Mister Jeremy Connolly did come out with you too, uh, like Boston, it was it just probably shook the GA uh, GA news and everything. Like it just was huge news. Like the, it obviously would have done Boston, uh, done got Boston the world good. Yeah, um, like it was actually, it was during what I wanted to go away and I was kind of on the fence about going and then he was like, well, look, I'm going to go. So like, hey, do you want to come with me or not? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? We'll give it a go. So uh, we were originally going to San Francisco and then um, End of Arley and um, End of Arley had gone, I think the year before us to, to Donegal, Boston. Um, obviously played with Mayo and was involved with, with the Vincent's club. So he be a good buddy of mine. And then the same with Jer Brennan. Jer, he went, I think, the year before end of Ardy to and played with Donegal Boston. So we had a bit of a link there. Mm. Um, and then, of course, like I lived with a guy with Nathan Mullins and, and Carl Dibber, uh, buddies of mine, both Donegal men. And like they were like, you have to go to Donegal Boston. Like, so yeah, uh, it was it was it was nearly like it was set in, in the stars that we had to play with them. So once we got over them, uh, we like there's so many really good people involved with, with the club. Um, like Paddy McDevitt, um, Paul Martin, or the boss, like there's serious guys that are, um, they just do anything for their club as if it were, were back in, in, in a club in Ireland. Like the, the, the passion they have, you can see it on their face. Like this is their club and they, they, they have so much energy and passion for it that it's, it can be infectious. Like it really can. So as soon as we kind of started playing for them, it was like, like, look, we're, we're not just here for a holiday kind of thing. It was like, look, we want to win this championship. So, like, yeah. these guys haven't won one in so long. So, yeah. let's just win this championship, you know. And uh, in fairness, Dermot bought into that. And in the county final that day, he kicked 12 points. Like, he was he was incredible. He was uh, it was, so, it was rolling back the years. Like, he, he, he hadn't really been fit all summer. He probably wasn't playing his best football all summer. But, like... He, he's just a big game player and sure enough in the in the final he just turned it he brought it to a different level yeah I suppose that at the laugh of the picture I think one game you're, not, it was a Connemara Gales maybe he was playing I can't get the name just alludes me but I think the marker just seeing Jeremy Connolly coming running down towards him I think he just had to laugh um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. what was your thoughts on that yeah yeah like uh, but he, that that team that we had that year like um, obviously you had, you had Dermot Connolly but like you had Kira McFall from Derry mm -hmm. Um, you had Liam Silk from Galway. You had a couple other Corfin lads. Okay. Um, you had um, you had Brendan Murphy from Carlo. Like you had a really strong panel. Like it, and then like the home base we have are, are very good players that would make senior club teams back at home. So yeah. it, it was no surprise that that obviously that we won the championship. But like that when we got in, like Dermot Connolly's not going to win a game by himself. No yeah. different than any other player, so we had to. Ha they had to have a really good team, and uh, thankfully we did, and thankfully we still do have a really good team. So we'll be going in for to win a championship this year again. Absolutely, absolutely. I suppose do you, do you miss maybe? Do you miss home? Obviously, we're coming up to the take and trust of championship now. Would you miss home? Or are you are you just content where you are? Or? Um, it's more the people you miss than than the place, really. You know, like the the crack with the lads, like. Uh, and your friends and family definitely um, had a very very tight bond with, with my nana back in Ireland so like small things like that I really do miss um, but 
look, I'm very happy here in Boston. Like, I, I love what I do. Uh, I love the place. Um, I have a good routine here. So, no, for the moment, I'm, I'm very happy where, where we are. Um, so, the, that, yeah, I can't see myself moving home anytime soon, really, to be honest. Absolutely. I suppose your thoughts on Dublin this year ahead, Shane. Obviously, uh, no, like people nearly describe it as a drive to not win Sam the last two years. Well, I, I just can't see it myself. But obviously, seeing the likes of Jack McCaffrey coming back, Paul Mannion, and this fella called Stephen Cluxon. Don't know. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. yeah, look, I think Dublin will be always in the top four. Um, like, so it's it's small margins then. It's it's I. It's, it's tough to know what's going on behind the scenes, but I'd imagine that all the right things um, will be said, and particularly if, if Cluxton's coming back in. He's a massive leader in that group, whether he's playing or not. He'll be just his presence alone and what he says to the lads will be a massive uh, positive, that's for sure. So I, I definitely wouldn't rule them out. They'd be between, uh, I think it'd be Dublin and Kerry in the top two. Um, I think Derry will have a good shout. They won't be too far off and Mayo as well, but I don't know if either of them could uh, consistently like, have enough to beat to win an All-Ireland. I think whereas Kerry and Dublin mentally have been to the well and they know what it takes, and I think that's when that's what it comes down to. And obviously, Shane, we did see yeah, Paul Mannion go out to America as well, and obviously I think he, he obviously did kind of come home, but I suppose what was it like having Mannion out there for a couple of months? Yeah, look, Paul's a, Paul's a great guy, and he's a great footballer, but um, he he was a massive addition to our team in Boston, but he really wanted to win a championship, which I really respected about him. Like he came over here again, not looking for a holiday. He wanted to kind of use this as a a platform to kind of get back into the Dublin squad. Yeah, and obviously you saw how successful he was with his club, Kilmacud Croaks, and fair play to them for winning the All Ireland as well. Um, but no, like he, he was great to have around, and he, he's just a positive positive influence with, with anyone he speaks to. He, he's passionate about the game and um, he was, he's a really good guy. I suppose Jack McCaffrey, not a bad addition as well. Yeah, I think um, like getting Paul and Jack back will only add to the, to the squad. I think Jack, um, you know, he was away for a couple of years. He's, everyone was questioning, like, will he be able to, to get back up to the pace of it? But the thing about Jack is he's, he's very different than, than everyone else. He doesn't think about Gaelic games the way you and I might think about it or everyone else he, he's very um, he's a relaxed kind of soul if you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so he, he wouldn't overthink the game and, and he just keeps it very simple and he's still obviously electric fast uh, electric pace so he's got something that will definitely bring a bit of X factor to that Dublin team um, so I, I'd be quietly confident that adding those guys in and having the Stephen Cluxton in the background there yeah. you know, whether he's playing or not who, who, we'll see but I'd imagine that um, They'll be kind of sitting in the long grass looking to 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 win the win the Sam Maguire again. Hmm, they'll be definitely there there. But I suppose obviously I was just been watching a couple of podcasts this week and then I think it was a Paddy Andrews and Paul Finn were very, very, very complimentary of your fitness prowess when you're playing for Dublin Shin. Do you take it on board? Uh yeah, yeah, like back a couple of years ago, like uh, look I, I was never the most skillful in terms of like, I didn't have with with Darren McConnelly or some of the other guys would have had. Um growing up it just I wasn't playing the game like like they were so I had to try and focus on being as fit as possible and I'm naturally a fitter type of ca- fit character I just would be good at the, the fitness test and stuff like that so I kind of used that as like right well this is my strength so I need to try and push on that and um, that's kind of been my role the last couple of years now it's different with New York now I'm, I'm probably not as fit as I would have been a couple of years ago you're, you're out of the game um, yeah for a few years and so I was trying to, to get back up to that level but now I'm probably more experienced to know well I don't need to run as much well, maybe I can pick and choose my battles and uh, yeah, yeah. try and get on the ball in different places so um, yeah that's that's kind of how we did it Absolutely as well Shane to, uh, last few uh, what kind of players are exciting you at the minute obviously across the pond but even in Ireland what players would you be paying your few pounds into Croke Park to see? Obviously David Clifford is is He's a world class uh, athlete, you know. Um, I, I honestly, um, I'd be looking forward to seeing a buddy of mine, Kieran McFaul, back playing with Derry. Uh, that would be good, yeah, of, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he put a lot of like I was training with him over the winter, and the guys, and 
an animal trainer like you're talking about how I was fit like I couldn't keep up with this guy um now I, I joked that I'm Dom DL for that I have a couple of years on him but like he was um he's an animal in the gym and he's just a really really good guy as well like I have a lot of time for him so I really will be looking forward to to seeing him back playing with Derry and I'd like to see it, that. it was important for him to get home wasn't it just from, yeah, from was, everything yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It'd be, I'd like to see him get back into into Crow Park and you know maybe get a game against Dublin and Derry Dublin for all Ireland final I'd have to go home and see that one like yeah, you know, obviously you did beat them a few weeks ago as well. So obviously, uh, the, the triumph uh, that day as well. I suppose very last question: Do you feel the game's in a good place? Is there anything you'd like to change, or what's your overall thoughts? Uh, yeah, like it, it, the only thing maybe is the 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 hand pass, and I would probably look to to limit. But honestly, I think if you, if you look at that game on Saturday night, um, there was a there was a guy who who doesn't know anything about the game, um, who, who I become very friendly with. He's an older guy and. He went to the game on Saturday night, and okay. like he, he's he couldn't get over like how everyone has a different. Not only does every position have a different type of role, but like the cornerbacks are just man marking defenders and get the hand in. And that's a great skill, and um, you know the high fielding out of the likes of Johnny Glynn and. Um, uh, but like he wouldn't want Johnny kicking the ball, he'll tell you that himself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then then like just say my role is kind of more of a transitionary role and, and linking the play and getting on ball and kick passing. And then you've got guys inside like Mikey Brodson and Adrian Barry that are kicking scores. So there's there's so many I think the game's at a really good place because if you look at that game on Saturday, it had all the different skills and on on and okay, fair enough, it's at a lower level than what would be in division one. But yeah. you know, and and that's nearly the, the beauty of it. Um, so I think no, I think the game's in a really good place, and I look forward to to getting out next week and and playing against Sligo and hopefully getting to a kind of final and um, having a pop off uh, Galway or Roscommon. Hmm. Some Absolutely. story. Oh, it would be Shane. It absolutely would be. I think the whole country would absolutely love to see it. Make no doubt about it, man. Well, Shane Cardi, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, the podcast brought to you by yorkerreds.com. Use Rural Gym or podcast to get 15% off on the website. Mr. Cardi, the very, very best look in the semi final. I think the whole country bar Sligo will be backing this. And uh, have a great, have a great finish to your Thursday. Cheers, man. Thanks very much. Cheers, pal.